What is going on guys, it's your boy Justicia here with another episode of the Space Engineers Beginner's Guide. In this episode we will be taking a look at the advanced blocks and of course making your ship fly on its own, remote controlling. So, right now we have our little guy that we made in the build your first ship um, video. This is actually just, you know, this was for exp sort of, yeah, this was just an example. And we will be using this ship as uh, as our little drone. Because it is solar powered and it can fly for a very, very long time. It is currently turned off, so we'll turn it on for now. Now, let's talk about remote controlling first. And then we'll move on to the advanced blocks. So, over here we have a remote control block. As you can see, uh, this guy over here is the remote control. And what it does, basically... Let's just turn this into... into yep. Uh, what it does, it is or it controls the ship from a distance. Um, it simply is a sort of computer that you can control from a distance and it will let you control your ship from a distance. So you place it on here with a antenna because otherwise you won't be able to send like a signal and connect to it. You will need the antenna and uh, of course some power because otherwise it won't power up and then you're good. It's basically all there is. You will need an antenna on your uh, grid, like the station that you want to control it from. Um, and of course a uh, cockpit or a flight seat that, or like a control station that uh, you can access the control panel with. So over here we can see, on the top over here, remote access. You can now see connection is stable, remote control is ready and ownership is correct. If the ownership is not correct, you cannot like control it. If the remote control block is not ready, of course, as you can see, we do not have a remote control block on the station here, so we won't be able to control the station from a distance. And of course, they both have uh, antennas, so they are good. So let's control the small grid over here. As you can see, nothing really changed except for the hotbar. As you can see, our hotbar is now different. We have landing gears. And if we unlock the landing gears, you can see that we can now fly this guy around. Now you would say, you would say, this is actually not very practical because if it flies out of view, we don't actually have anything to look at it or like follow it around. So it would actually be kind of useless. That's where the camera comes in. As you can see, let me fly this guy a bit forward. I have put a camera on front of the ship. Which means that I can now, because I am in the control uh, station of, or the uh, control thing of um, Small Grid, we can now actually control the camera. So if you want to add your camera to your hotbar, you can actually just search them in the blocks and just click on view over here. So it sets it to view. So then if you press 2, now we are looking through the eyes of the drone. And now we can fly away, our little guy is in there in the cockpit. We can shoot, we can do whatever. Everything we want and everything you would normally be able to do um, when in this ship. So press F if you want to exit it again. So we're gonna land this guy again and then we'll talk about an advanced thing. So I just turn it off and just stop the, uh, the connection. If we go and sit into this guy with the remote control block and we go, we press I and we go over here to remote control, we'll look at this. So, we have control thrusters, control wheels, control gyros, you can do whatever you want with this, just personalize it a bit, show horizon altitude, you can do that yourself. Uh, main remote control, yeah, if that's if you have more like remote controls, like on turrets on the sides, like on a ship, then you will have to want to let this guy be the main control because otherwise the turret will you know uh do its thing so um collision avoidance autopilot uh, precision mode these guys are very important collision avoidance stop your stops your ship from hitting surfaces like ground other ships and uh if you put this on and your cargo ship flies towards your connector it will actually not connect because it will stay hovering above it because it doesn't want to collide with it so this is a thing you'll have to keep in mind if you're making like uh, cargo drones and stuff 
precision mode is this is basically because uh, the ship flies from um, waypoint to waypoint let me just add some of these which i previously set you can just click them here and just place add in whatever order you want to um, this basically means that it will go to the exact center of every single waypoint so if you put this off it will like sort of glide like to the side and I'll already move to the next waypoint but if you put it to precision it will stop at the waypoint and then move on to the next waypoint so precision mode we want that on so it doesn't actually fly into stuff uh, by accident assigned camera this doesn't really matter but but i usually set it just to the camera i have flight mode you can set it to circle so it will go to one two three and then around to one you can go do it to patrol to so it will patrol to one two three and then back again to two and one and you, you can set it to one way, so it will go from one to two to three, and then it will stop and then it will not go any further. So we want it to just go into a circle and just loop around from one, two, three, and then back. For direction, yeah, it's basically what we want. We want it to be facing forward, forwards. Um, and then the speed limit we will set to 25 because we do not want this guy to reach like 100 kilometers per hour or meters per hour because it will like f crash into stuff because it can't like break uh, yeah it, it won't slow down fast enough so we have set these three waypoints you set those waypoints by pressing uh, i or any other key to open up this menu and then go to gps and then you can set new from current position as you can see i have these with the coordinates and then uh, you can like fly up like this Let's go to gps new from current position and then and it will create a waypoint so we've set the waypoints now the only thing we need to do is fly it a bit up so it doesn't actually bug out uh, control we'll go to remote control and now that we've added the waypoints the autopilot has become uh, configurable so we will set this to on and as you can see it will now fly on its own and search out the nearest waypoint look at that as you can see the collision avoidance is very important because it actually pushes him off the ground and doesn't let it run into the antennas and now as you can see it moves from waypoint to waypoint to the next i'm guessing let me just hop on here uh, no. there we go and now it, it moves as you can see it avoids the collision to number three and again the antenna so it will probably no it's fine it will go back to one and two and three and whatever so that's pretty cool right you can make these guys anything you want you can make them floating turrets you can make them cargo ships that fly from one place to another and just hover there for a bit uh yeah you can basically do whatever you want with this um and you can use timers and stuff to uh, to even inc to increase their effectiveness even more so that's basically how you set up remote control um and uh, yeah we will move on to the advanced blocks so first of all of course the timer so the timer is basically a sort of commando block which basically says uh, okay on this moment you will do this 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 and that and then i will wait or something like that you can configure this uh, in a, a control seat or any other seat uh, you can go to the let me see timer block and then you can set action set up actions and underneath here in the toolbar will be the actions so let's say we want to close the hangar door um, like open and closed boom there we go that's the action that it's gonna take so if we now trigger it as you can see the hangar door will close it's basically sort of a command block that will do a lot of things um, in a specific order you can also chain timer blocks into each other so they do different things with different um, delays because the timer block actually can be set to a delay so if we would um, place another time timer block into its actions over here and that timer block has a 10 second delay set to it it will take 10 seconds for the other uh, timer block to activate because the command to activate the timer block has has been given but it takes about 10 seconds to actually do it um yeah this is basically speaks for itself it makes a little beep sound when it's activated so if if it does that like a lot of times just put it to silent you can also make like um things that um like go around or like repeat yeah, you, 
you can basically make a my bad you can basically make a repeater with this guy so two timer blocks and just this guy activates this guy and this guy activates the other guy and then you'll have like a repeater that goes goes on and on and on you'll have to set those delays quite well though because otherwise it won't work now we have the rotors these guys this basically can turn stuff around so you're not limited to just placing stuff in a specific form you can also place these guys uh, or like place blocks on here uh, with like, an, uh, like a remote control block let's just say it. let's just do that and then we can go to the control panel advanced rotor and then we'll like set it uh, to a velocity of 1.15 and as you can see it turns around so that's also how this rotor works uh, just a note this rotor over here just turns stuff around but this rotor as you can see has a conveyor on the top and the bottom which means that you can attach uh, conveyor stuff to here on this and it will actually um, act as a conveyor as well so that's actually kind of kind of handy to have well let that turn this is a piston i will actually activate it over here and just by pressing reverse hello oh, i'll need of course the velocity reverse is you working um don't think it's working oh there it goes okay so the velocity wasn't set properly um yeah it basically extends blocks and retracts them you can make some cool landing gears with these just like extending from the bottom of your ship do my do be mindful though these guys are quite large and uh, even the small versions are also quite large so uh yeah all right um the airtight hangar door is actually a very important thing to use in space if you place multiple next to each other and some on the opposite side uh, you will be able to make a closed hanger with oxygen um, these guys just need to get the command open or close and they will close and they are three blocks in length as you can see if i do this as you can see you can see the red lines they will go to around here and then they will be open so i i recommend just placing another one on the opposite side and they that they will connect uh, like so let me see maybe i can do it and show you like so so now they are connected three and three and then if you place another wall on this side we can activate them with open and closed let me see airtight hangar door select them both closed and now you can see they will slowly close you can't actually change the velocity that these guys do it but as you can hear It's closed now. Looks pretty freaking cool. Um, and yeah, you'll. But these guys are quite expensive actually in survival, so bring a lot of resources. These guys are airtight, so if you close this down and you'll seal a door and pressurize it with an air vent, yeah, you're basically good. You'll have like a uh, pressurized room that you can use and breathe in. Of course, in space you'll also need oxygen, so that's where this oxygen farm comes in. As you can see there are little plants in there and it generates oxygen with the use of sunlight not regular light sunlight um, yeah put these guys on the outside of your station they will generate oxygen and they have a conveyor thing on the bottom that will transport the oxygen to the nearest oxygen tank or air vent to pressurize rooms or yeah basically supply it with oxygen that's that so um, these are actually parachute hatches so these guys uh, are actually so freaking useful i i used to be sort of hesitant when using these guys because i thought my ship would like the parachute would go and then it would like go in a weird sort of movement when using the parachutes but uh, i actually found that if you place them on the right spots so let's say we grab a parachute <clears throat> let's say this platform is our ship and it's uh, descending towards uh, the planet surface and we place four of these and we activate them all at the same time it will land exactly like this so be mindful where you place them but these guys slow down your descent by a ton if you deploy them it will be almost immediately afterwards that they slow you down be mindful though do not take my word for that because you might actually 
like deploy them just before the ground but i wouldn't recommend it just deploy it for uh, like if you have like five kilometers left or like 10 kilometers i would deploy them because then uh, that would be the safest bet so next up we have the artificial mass i'm not going to go into this very much uh, it's just a weight you can pretty much put this on something and it will increase the weight of it so if you want to make like a catapult you can make or like a trebuchet for example just for fun you can make some artificial masses let it uh, drop with a rotor and just fall to the ground and then it shoots off something because uh, you have put this weight on there that's basically it i normally never use this because you, if you place this on a small ship like that one it will drop to the ground almost instantly because i think this guy is like 50 yeah, yeah uh, you can see it 50,000 kilograms so that's quite quite heavy this is probably one of the most important blocks you will need when traveling between planets so the jump drive charges with an insane amount of power you will need like three of these guys to charge this act, like quite quickly um but once it's charged it's, it can actually it can actually do something very amazing so if we just go and press g on here we can set it to jump increase distance decrease distance and then recharge on or off so as you can see now we have in our hotbar a few of these uh, commands the jump one is basically jump towards where i am facing so if i'm facing towards a planet and my distance is um like yeah 20 kilometers like this um i can just press one and it will jump and it will give this cool star wars like um yeah hyperdrive effect and you will jump like instantly now the thing to keep in mind uh, you cannot jump into a, at a planet's atmosphere so if it's too close like if you're jumping towards the planet but it will actually go through it or like the destination will be inside the atmosphere it will actually say that it can jump because otherwise you're dead so um you can't override that so that's just how it works you can decrease and increase it of course as you can see with the amount of kilometers oh never mind it's 200 kilometers whoops uh, and then you can set it to charge or recharge on or off so uh, you can set it to stop recharging so it doesn't drain all the power out of your ship very cool expensive but so worth it when traveling between planets so that was pretty much it i think i covered like pretty much everything we have our little guy still flying around um yeah i don't really think that there's something else i may make uh, another video on like cosmetic stuff like building your ship and just making it look cool and beautiful um but yeah that was pretty much everything that you needed to know about space engineers um i hope you guys enjoyed this video learn something from it and as always like if you liked it subscribe if you want to and i wish you guys a very happy weekend day or anything other that you are doing all right this outro is getting way too long <laughs> peace guys